Paradise Lost as an Epic Paragraph 1 Before we undertake a literary evaluation of Paradise Lost as an Epic, it is useful to define in general terms what essentially an epic is. Various definitions of an epic have been advanced, but it is generally agreed that an epic is characterized by such features as sublimity of theme, anthropomorphic or larger than life characters, grand style, greatness of action, seriousness of treatment, expression of high sentiments, digression in the main theme, invocation to the muse, and finally a moralistic conclusion. If we look at the whole history of epic writing, we can rather conclusively maintain that Homer's Iliad and Odyssey in the primitive Greek literature, Virgil's Aeneid in the Latin period, the Beowulf in the medieval period, and the Paradise Loss in the Renaissance period have proved world's greatest epic compositions in the Western literature. However, Homer's epics have seemed as the chief model of this type of writing. Even the Eastern epics of Mahabharata and the Shahnama Islam followed almost the same principles. A distinction is also made between epics which are essentially natural, an outgrowth of traditional storytelling such as Homer's Iliad and Odyssey and those which have been consciously conceived such as Milton's Paradise Lost. What follows in the next paragraph, a critical appreciation of Paradise Lost as an epic. Considered from the time honored names of this branch of literature. Paragraph number two. The first and foremost quality of an epic is that it has a central theme of grand scale. For a narrative poem of an epic dimension, it is natural to admit of a number of themes and interpretations, yet it usually resolves round one central point and the rest is peripheral and subservient to the main subject. The main theme of Iliad is the destruction of a city and that of Aeneid, the foundation of an empire, but the theme of the paradise lost is of universal nature, the fall of man. While the theme of other epics is of national interest, Milton's subject undoubtedly transcends national boundaries and assumes cosmic character although he had been toying with the idea of writing on the ancient British history of the pre-Anglo-Saxon period described in terms of Arthurian saga. Eventually, he gave up everything in favor of a biblical theme and attempted 
something which was never contemplated before. In this way, Milton chose a topic dealing with the entire mankind and depicted the destiny of all humanity through the sin of the first man created by God Almighty. Paragraph number 3 Another quality of an epic is that it follows an action based on the principles of unity, entirety and greatness. The action of Paradise Lost has all the quality manifested through the central action of the fall of man. Every other episode is directly or indirectly linked to the main action. The compactness and the unity of the central action is not affected by the occasional digression of the poem. The entirety of action hinges on the fact that it has a beginning, a middle and an end. Following this principle, the action in Paradise Lost is triggered off in Hell, executed on Earth and brought to final in Heaven. The greatness of the action of Paradise Lost is evident in the thematic choice, in the duration of theme and the portrayal of characters. Paragraph number 4 Another important feature of epic poetry is the inclusion of characters that transcend human dimensions. They are larger than life so that the ordinary people hold them in great awe and wonder. Homer used gods and goddesses. Virgil employed supernatural characters, but in Milton, the epic grandeur reaches its peak. Here we have all sorts of variety ranging from Adam, Eve to God, Christ, Satan, his followers, the good and evil angels. Thus, almost all the characters in Paradise Lost are of gigantic and superhuman proportions, yet none is which lacks qualities befitting their inclusion in the epic. Paragraph number 5 An epic is the most exalted and elevated form of writing. Its style, therefore, must be compatible with its theme which is traditionally of a higher order of conceptions as is exemplified in all the epics written prior to Paradise Lost. The Paradise Lost has undoubtedly a grand style. Vast similes and metaphors Images and analogies contribute to make its texture rich, varied and colorful. All these stylistic embellishments have been derived from various sources, philosophy, logic, medieval thinking, theology, geography, renaissance, discoveries and contemporary ideas about both micro and macrocosm. 
This gives Milton's epic an element of sublimity, beauty, and suggestiveness. Paragraph number six. It is a kind of unwritten literary code that poets invoke the help of some higher beings in the opening lines of the poem. In conformity with this convention, Milton invokes the help of heavenly muse in his great task. Similarly, an epic must have a hero with extraordinary qualities of head and heart. Adam, who is the hero of the Paradise Lost, has been endowed with heroic qualities of this kind, although this is a bit contentious among the critics, yet Adam is definitely a figure noble in reason, infinite in capabilities, admirable in action, sublime in character, and simultaneously with all the weaknesses characteristic of man. In epic, Characters are usually of anthropomorphic dimensions. So are they in the Paradise Lost in the shape of Saturn, his followers, angels and God Almighty himself. The characters must have a dignity as well as variety. Here we have human as well as superhuman characters. Adam and Eve are human characters, whereas God, Satan, the good and the evil angels are superhuman characters. Para 7 An epic is a serious poem embodying sublime and noble thoughts. There is no room for fun and non-seriousness in classical epics. Milton's Paradise Lost is a sublime poem characterized by sublimity of thought and sentiments. All the major and minor incidents in the poem receive equal treatment with seriousness. Paragraph number 8 an epic is inconceivable without an explicit moral lesson for the reader. It is something inextricable from the paradise lost. Milton clearly seeks to justify the ways of God to man, the rationale behind religion and the necessity of obedience to the divine law. The last para. In conclusion, we can maintain that Paradise Lost is one of the few greatest epics of the world. In the conception of the theme, it is unparalleled. In the execution of it, the poem is as good as others. However, the heathen and mythological digressions seem to sound inconsistent with the original spirit of the epic. Similarly, autobiographical differences are quite evident in the Paradise Lost. This is against the norms of classical epics. Yet, Milton's contribution is definitely of a higher quality to this form of poetry. Thank you.
अगर आपने अभी तक हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया तो बड़ा मेहरबानी से सब्सक्राइब कर लीजिए और बेल आइकॉन भी प्रेस कर दीजिए ताकि हमारी नई आने वाली वीडियोस का आपको बर वक्त पता चल सके शुक्रिया